Hello, I am the frame. <laughs> I'm here today because I wanted to talk about anamorphic. I'm going fully anamorphic. Yeah, I've ordered some new lenses. They have now arrived, so I figured I'd hop on and talk about it. Echoes of Brushstrokes, that little video I put up on my main channel a couple of weeks ago, all of that was shot on this. This is the Suray Anamorphic 50mm T2.9, and it has a 1.6x de-squeeze factor. Now, they're really cool lenses. I've actually had this 50mm for quite a while, but I never really... I shot bits with it, and I kind of messed around with it and had fun with it, but I never shot anything major with it which is why i decided to take it down south with me to the coast and then i got up in the morning and just decided to film the entire day with the anamorphic lens because it sounded like fun and it was i really enjoyed it it's fully manual so there's no autofocus whatsoever it's entirely manual it's got quite a short throw as well so it's not the easiest thing in the world to focus especially if you're trying to film yourself that took a little bit of work it also has a manual aperture ring which i'm a big fan of i love having the aperture on the lens, it's all de-clicked as well. Oh, so it's all super smooth. You can change your exposure nice and quickly just on the lens and the viewer doesn't know because there's no clicks. And then I also use a variable ND. Oh, and it was all shot on this. This is the Lumix S5 Mark II X. I also do have the S5 Mark II, which is what I'm shooting on now. That also does anamorphic. You can shoot full 6K, three by two, which when you de-squeeze the anamorphic by 1.6, you end up with 2.4 to 1, which is your super wide cinema scope, like films are made with, like you see at the cinema, essentially. Now, interestingly, that video, the whole thing was shot run and gun. I didn't really decide that I was going to do it until the morning of when I just got the camera out and was like, well, I'm getting out of bed now. Let's film that. And then I just kind of kept going throughout the day. But it was all filmed kind of like a vlog. I didn't plan any of the shots. I didn't think about it ahead of time. I just set the camera up when I was doing a thing, try to make some sort of composition with the rule of thirds and general stuff and filmed it as we went. The only time I did go back and film something was when I got home, I realized I didn't have an opener. So that's when I went and did like the car shots to, to have some sort of opening. Funny story, actually, I've got a little car mount. I bought a car mount off Amazon. It was like 35 quid, cheap car mount. And rather than testing it beforehand, I literally slapped this straight on, which is, I don't know, like three and a half grand's worth of camera. It's really quite heavy on the bonnet of my car without really testing it. I was kind of pooing myself. It was a silly decision, but it all worked out. So there you go. And I really liked the output. It was easy to work with in DaVinci Resolve, and I just think it looked cool. It's, I made some mistakes in the editing, and I, I've actually redone a better version. Maybe I'll put that unlisted somewhere so you can go watch it if you want to. Just some minor things. The audio got a bit screwed up on export, so it was louder than I meant it to be. Yada, yada, yada. But anyway, I liked the output. I think it came out, and it looked pretty cool. So, why I love anamorphic. If you don't know, Maybe you do already, maybe you don't, I don't know. If you don't really know what anamorphic is, anamorphic lens is really hard to explain. <laughs> Essentially, there's loads of maths that goes into it with squeeze factors of what you need to do. But the simple fact of the matter is this. If you've ever shot photography, you'll know that shooting with a longer lens looks different to shooting with a wider lens. So if you shoot with an 85mm, you'll get like a really nice crop and there'll be really nice separation and it'll just look different than if you shot the same shot with a 35mm, for example. The wide to the telephoto, that kind of thing. An anamorphic allows you to shoot with that look of a longer lens, like the 50mm for example. It looks like a 50mm, you're a 50mm distance away from your subject, but you get the width of a 30 mil. So that 50 mil that I shoot, this Suray with its 1.6 squeeze, it's equivalent to a 31 millimeter. The height of the end frame is exactly the same as if I'd shot a standard 50 mil, but the width is that of a 30 mil. Now to achieve that, what the anamorphic lens does essentially is pretend that this is the frame. Hello, I am the frame. <laughs> Pretend that this is the sensor, so my eyes here are the sensor. Usually we'd just be capturing whatever is directly in front. What anamorphic does is it looks wider, so it's looking over here, and then to get all of this extra width, it actually takes the frame and squishes it down. So if you were to look on the back of your camera, it looks squished, it compresses everything in. And that's where that de-squeeze factor, that 1.6 comes in. It's gathering 1.6, the frame, 
and then squashing it in. Now, the Lumix S5, it has a de-squeeze on there already, so I can set it to just de-squeeze that so that it looks normal on the back of my camera, which is super handy. And then all you need to do, you dump it into DaVinci Resolve, you right click on the footage and you can set it to unsqueeze by 1.6. So when you put it on your timeline, it looks good as gold and it's ready to go. Anamorphic in a nutshell, really. Now there are other things which come with anamorphic, like you get the flares, these have got blue flares. I'm not really that bothered about the flares. They kind of look cool, but they can also ruin some shots as well. So the flares aren't really why I bought it. I bought it because I just love that look. And it's really noticeable, I think, even to other people. I showed all my mates who don't give a crap about any of this sort of stuff. We were literally sat in the pub and I showed them. They were like, why does that look cool? Why does it look different? So there is something there which even people that don't know what they're looking at can tell the difference. And I just really like that look. So I bought two more. A long way of getting to that point, wasn't it? I don't know. This is coffee chat. I'm allowed to waffle. Leave me alone. So we've got this one. This is the 100 mil. It's also a T 2.9. T is basically the amount of light that gets let into the lens. Like your F stops, but it's measured in T's, which is the actual amount of light rather than just the size of the opening. It doesn't matter. It's a T 2.9. It's pretty equivalent to an F 2.8. So we've got the 100 mil. The 100 mil, that vertical size of the frame is 100 mil. The width, 60 mil. The equivalent, it will look like a 60 mil in terms of the width that you get. And then the next one is this, the Diddy one. This is the 35 mil. Once again, it is T2.9 and it is 1.6. And again, 35 mil, 22 mil. So this is a really, really, really wide lens. Now, they're not the cheapest lenses in the world, but I've got a bit of an offer on them so it's ended up costing me i bought the 50 mil used i got that for about 600 quid a while ago so that was a really good offer and then those were meant to be about 1200 quid each for these other ones but they had some discounts going so i ended up paying about 900 pound each for them so two and a half grand ish english pound sterling for the full set of three so as far as anamorphic lenses go that's quite cheap for me, who's just a random brummy, that's a lot of money to spend on lenses. I've never spent that much on lenses before. So there you go. Now, I'm going to have loads of fun with them. I've not really shot much with the 100 mil or the 35 mil. I've not really shot anything other than just playing around around the house. But I will try and get out there, have some fun with them, play with them, shoot some cool stuff. And I will do a proper review on all of this stuff on the main channel as well at some point. They don't really make sense, to be honest, especially if you're a filmmaker. If you're going out for that anamorphic look, they're a really good way to get into it. There are loads of other anamorphic options down at this kind of budget end at the moment. But anamorphic doesn't make a huge amount of sense because there are some considerable drawbacks to using anamorphic. For one, because of the streaks, you do have to keep everything level. Because you get those little light streaks coming across the, the screen, you have to pay extra attention to the leveling within your shot. All of your horizons have to be level. Because if you have a shot that's slightly skewed, everyone can tell. Because you've got a big line going through it and it looks weird. So you do have to spend extra attention. Excuse me. So you do have to spend extra time and attention just making sure that everything's level, which again, slows you down a little bit more. Now, the worst thing about them, the absolute worst thing about them is this, the minimum focus distance. Now, apparently doing some research, this is common among anamorphic lenses, but it does suck. It's, it's painful to work with. So this 35 mil has a minimum focus distance of just under a meter. So it's three foot. So that's, it's, it's a decent old amount. It's quite a distance. And it's least noticeable on the 100 mil because it's telephoto, so your, your subject is quite big in the frame. It's most noticeable on that 35 mil. Because it's such a wide lens, remember it has the width of a 22 millimeter, you want to get close to things to get them big in the frame. And you just can't because of that minimum focus distance. So you can buy these things. Ooh, look how big my face is. Which are just cheap. Uh, close focusing filters, diopters, I think they call them. But then there's extra things to think about. Like you've got a 2X and a 4X and an 8X and a 16X. So you've got to know how close you are. You're going to be to your subjects. And then you put your filter on. So then you can't focus to infinity anymore. You can blah, blah, blah. It, it's extra work and it's a pain. So 
of the three, because of that, I think the 35 is my least favorite. If you're only going to buy one, I'd buy the 50 mil. I'll probably, if I'm only going to take one with me, I'll take the 50 mil because it's kind of the best of both worlds. The 100 mil seems cool. You get the most anamorphic kind of look with the with the 100 mil because it's telephoto. 35 is going to be the most annoying to work with because of that minimum focus distance. In summary, no one's going to watch this video. Oh well. But yeah, that's why I've bought them. That's why I like them. That's the problem with them. The S5 range, and I'll talk about this at the beginning, but the S5, the Panasonic S5 Mark II, it's brilliant for anamorphic. It's not perfect. I'd love to have higher frame rates. I can only shoot in up to 30. I shoot everything at 25 frames. And I'd love to be able to do 50 just to get a little bit of slow-mo or something, but I can't, so that's annoying. But, you know, I can put LUTs on there, so my vlog is kind of going to look like my output. And it's even got, like, anamorphic stabilization on there, which no other manufacturer can really do at the moment, which is mega. Now, I did obviously consider also upgrading to the Blackmagic Cinema 6K, Basically, it's got pretty much the same sensor. It's the 6K version. It has L mounts, the same as these, but it's in the Blackmagic body. But I really like this because anamorphic. I didn't rig it out. I just shot like this. I shot it all to internal SSDs and all that sort of stuff. I can lob that off. Put this teeny tiny 45 mil. This is the Sigma F 2.8, I think, 45 mil. And now I can throw this in a bag and it's a really, really nice photo camera. Or I can shove a 16 to 35 on it and it's a vloggy camera. You can't do that with a Blackmagic, so this kind of serves all purposes for me. So there you go. So that, that's Coffee Chat. I'm going to wrap this up because I've been talking for way too long. No one's going to watch this. If you are watching this and you're enjoying a coffee or a tea or a water, lemon water maybe, cornflakes, whatever you're eating, I don't know, whatever you've got. If you, <laughs> if you are doing any of those things even if you're having your morning poo hello thanks for watching and uh oh yeah i'll keep these regular these are fun i'm just gonna chat nonsense with no real plan take it easy folks bye